In this video, we are going to look at how you would answer a question that requires you to evaluate the extent to which a law is likely to be an effective law. For these purposes, the law that we're looking at is this one, a law that school students must not use social media for more than one hour each day except for sharing information about significant events. Now, with these kinds of questions, you are being asked to express an opinion. That is, do you think that the law is likely to be effective or is not likely to be effective? So the way that we have to start off our answer is, in my opinion, and then uh, we're going to describe the law. In my opinion, the law that school students must not use social media for more than one hour a day except for sharing information about significant events And I'm going to say, is not likely to be an effective law. Now you can come to whatever opinion you like. The main thing is you've got to support that opinion with reasons. The next sentence I'm going to write is, there are three reasons for this. Now when we are evaluating whether a law is likely to be an effective law, we have to look at the PACES factors. And remember that there are five PACES factors. The first is the P factor. Uh, is the public aware of the law? The second is the A factor. Is the law likely to be acceptable to the community or the public? The third is the C factor. Is the law clearly drafted so that people can understand what it requires? The fourth factor is the E factor. Is the law able to be enforced? And the final factor, the S factor, is the stability factor. That is, is the law likely to have to change regularly? Now, the reason I've said that we're looking at three reasons is that for every PACES question, you will be able to look at the A, C and E factors. And in fact, you must look at each of those. It may be, but it's not necessarily the case, that you have enough information in the case study to also look at the P factor or the S factor. Now, just a word of warning here, and that is that when we are talking about the P factor, um, it's certainly the case that most people don't know uh, the laws or all of the laws that apply to them. However, most laws are published, and so people could read about the laws that apply to them if they want to. And it's because most laws are published that it's highly likely that the P factor will be satisfied in uh, all of the cases that you look at. That is, that the public is considered to be aware of the law. So you probably shouldn't um, be making any comment about the P factor unless there are specific facts in the case study uh, that tell you either that the law is not published or that it is published. All right, well, let's uh, move on then to evaluate the effectiveness um, of this law about the use of social media. And to do that, we're going to refer to the A, C and E factors. Now, the key to answering questions of this kind is to think before you write, um, especially uh, when you're looking at the C factor, that is, how clearly is the law drafted? You need to examine the words of the law and to come to a view as to whether they are very clear or whether uh, they are ambiguous in some way. Let's start off then with looking at the A factor. That is, is this law likely to be acceptable uh, to the community? Now, in this case, 
we know that school students do use social media a lot. And it's a very important way that school students keep in contact with their friends. So I'm going to uh, express the view that in this case, the law is not likely to be acceptable to the public or to the community. So here we go. We can say the first reason, that is the first reason why the law is not likely to be effective, is that the law is unlikely to be acceptable to the public. Or you can put to the community, it doesn't matter. And we're going to say, um, because social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram are very popular among all age groups. including school students. Most students use social media to keep in contact with their friends and that they are likely to object to their access to social media being limited because this would restrict their social lives. So you can see that I haven't just said oh, the law is not likely to be effective because it's not likely to be acceptable to the public. I've gone on and provided some fairly detailed reasons as to why I think that the uh, law is not likely to be acceptable to the community. All right, let's turn to the next factor, which is the C factor. That is, is the law clearly drafted? Now, when we come back to the law, um, I think there are at least two phrases that are ambiguous. The first is the law refers to significant events. But what's a significant event? What might be significant to one person might not be significant to another person. And I think the other phrase that's potentially ambiguous is the reference to social media. Uh, does social media extend, for example, to things like email? So, I write the second reason that is for the law not likely to be effective. The second reason is that the law is not clear. It is not clear what a significant event is. as different events will be of different significance to different people. So again, you can see I haven't just stopped at saying, oh, it's unclear what significant event means. I've gone on to explain why that's unclear. In fact, I could also add an example. So I could say, for example, a high school student might consider the election of Donald Trump as the President of the United States of America. 
America to be significant whereas a primary school student might consider the purchase of a family pet, perhaps a dog or a cat, to be significant. So that deals with whether significant event is clear. The other phrase which I think is potentially unclear is social media. So here I can say, in addition, it is not clear what social media is. And now I have to explain why I think uh, this is unclear. For instance, many students use email, but it is not clear whether email is covered by the law. Because an email can be sent to one person whereas communications using media such as Twitter can be sent to thousands of followers at a time. So here I'm pointing out that I'm not sure whether email is meant to be caught uh, by the phrase social media. It's still a form of communication uh, and students use it to communicate, but it's not quite like um, Twitter, uh, where you can contact lots and lots of people at the same time. Now, the final factor that we're going to look at is the E factor, that is, is the law enforceable? Um, enforceability means, um, are the police going to be able to enforce the law easily? Uh, do the police have the resources and the ability to monitor whether people are complying with the law and to prosecute them uh, if in fact they are not complying with the law? Now in this case, I think that a problem with enforcing this law is that many students use social media um, in the privacy of their own homes and bedrooms. So how are the police going to know whether any particular student is uh, using social media for more than one hour and in fact is using that social media um, other than for sharing information about significant events. So I can now write the third reason, that is the third reason why the law is likely to be ineffective. The third reason is that the law is unlikely to be enforceable. Now again, I don't stop there. I give a reason why it's unlikely to be enforceable, which is because the police will not know how much time school students spend in private using social media as they will not be able to monitor students in their houses and bedrooms. So that's how you go about uh, answering a question that requires you to evaluate the effectiveness of a law. Now, you might of course come to the view um, that a particular law um, 
is effective in some respects and is not effective in other respects. In other words, you might find that there are some PACES criteria that support the idea that the law is effective, and there are other PACES criteria or factors that suggest that the law is not effective. For argument's sake, let's assume that in the case we've just looked at, we conclude that the law is likely to be acceptable to the community. And we might conclude that because um, we think that parents are concerned that school students are spending an excessive amount of time uh, looking at social media and they're not uh, spending enough time in sport or perhaps even doing their homework. In that case, we can change our answer a little bit. You can see here that we can rewrite our answer. We'll still have the same opinion. In my opinion, the law that school students must not use social media for more than one hour each day except for sharing information about significant events is not likely to be an effective law. That's still the case. But here we've now written there are two reasons for this. And the two reasons are that uh, we think the law is not clear for the reasons that we've already discussed and also that we think the law is unlikely to be enforceable. Again, We've already explained why that's the case. But now you can see that because we think the law is likely to be acceptable to the community or to the public, we've put these words in. It is likely that the law will be acceptable to the public because most parents are concerned about their school-aged children wasting a lot of time using social media when they could be playing sport or doing their homework. Now we still have to express an opinion overall as to whether we think that the law is effective or ineffective. As I've said at the outset, we still think the law is not likely to be an effective law. So therefore we end our uh, answer by saying something like, however, this, that is the fact that we think the law is likely to be acceptable to the public, does not overcome the fact that the law is unclear and that it is unlikely to be enforceable. So that's how you go about answering um, a question that requires you to evaluate the extent to which a particular law is effective. If you've got any questions about this, please ask me in class.